didn't get the white matter in the last video so here it is here's the brain tipping it upside down take off the temporal lobes take off the temporal lobes and this pink stuff is representing the gray matter of the cerebral cortex and all of this white stuff is the white matter of the cerebrum so the pink is really the gray matter and the white is the white matter which is which is uh, called the internal capsule by the way but I think on your list we called it white matter so the pink stuff is gray matter then the white matter making this internal capsule right here okay <coughs> All right, here we go. Brain. I want to use this one. I like this one. Can you see? Mm -hmm. All right. This is the brain. The brain stem, what I'm going to do is take this apart in half, like this and this. And then I'm going to take the cerebellum off and take this out. The brain stem is the medulla of the pons. And some people consider this midbrain part of it your list does not your list says that the brain stem is the medulla oblongata that's what it looks like from the front the medulla oblongata the pons that's what it looks like the pons is this bulge right here from the side it looks like that and that's it now there's parts to this though the parts to this brain stem are as follows medulla oblongata has two parts over here and right here are called the olives. Olives. Inside the olives, there's these olivary nuclei, which are relay stations. And right here, this area of the medulla is called the pyramids. What happens there is the decussation of the pyramids. And that means your descending motor fibers cross over right there. They decussate or cross over. So this is the medulla. These are the pyramids. This is the right olive. That's the left olive. All right. This is the pons again, right there. Pons. Now the midbrain is here above the pons. And if I move this pituitary gland over, here above the pons. That's the midbrain. And the midbrain consists of these cerebral peduncles that you can see from the front. And if I turn it around, it consists of these four bumps on the back. One, two, three, four. Now what I'd like to do to show you those bumps a little bit better, because those bumps have names, is I'd like to take apart this and say to you, if you look right here, you see these two bumps, and then you have to look way deep in here to see those two bumps. It's just these four bumps right here. One, two, three, four. These four bumps all together make up what we call the corpora quadrigemina. Two superior colliculi, two inferior colliculi. So I'm going to turn it for Allison and Georgie and everybody. So two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi. There's four bumps right here, right here. Whoops, right here. Four bumps, all right? Superior colliculi, inferior colliculi. Superior colliculi, inferior colliculi. If I were to look on this brain model, I would see a superior colliculi and an inferior colliculi on this hemisphere, and I would see a superior colliculi and inferior colliculi in this hemisphere. All right. Midbrain, cerebral peduncles. So we did the cerebral peduncles right here. Right there's the cerebral peduncles. And we did the corporate quadrigemina, those four bumps. One, two, three, four. All right. Now I have cerebellar peduncles. On the back of the pons right here, hooks are relay stations that hook to the cerebellum. And my cerebellum is right here, and it goes like that. So now let me take off my cerebellum and show you the cerebellar peduncles. If I take the cerebellum off, it's actually the magnet. Do you see how this magnet touches that magnet? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, everything around that magnet is really the cerebellar peduncle. And everything around that magnet is really the cerebellar peduncle because when I put those together, the magnets touch. What the cerebellar peduncles do is they connect the pons to the cerebellum. Here's a super, superior cerebellar peduncle, here's a middle cerebellar peduncle, and here's an inferior cerebellar peduncle. All three cerebellar peduncles. They're right behind the cerebral peduncles. And I get nervous because I think you guys are going to mess up cerebral peduncle with cerebellar peduncle. 
because they're spelled similarly. But one says cerebral, going to the cerebrum. One says cerebellar, going to the cerebellum. So those are the cerebellar peduncles, F, G, and H right there. All right. On the cerebellum itself, by the way, this whole thing right here is called the cerebellum. This whole thing here is called the cerebellum, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Right in the middle of my two hemispheres of my cerebellum is this connecting, connecting area called the vermis right there. That's the vermis. You can see the vermis here as well. The vermis is the center of my cerebellum. And if I open up my cerebellum, I can see a tree-looking structure right there. That's called the arbor vitae. Arbor vitae. Any questions about that? All right. Next is the diencephalon. Now, this when you pick up this right here, this is really the insula, and the diencephalon is this stuff underneath it right here. I open this up to see the diencephalon because what I have when I open this up is I have my thalamus right here with the interthalamic adhesion in the center of my thalamus. <laughs> That's the interthalamic adhesion. This is my thalamus. I have my hypothalamus right here. And I have my epithalamus right here. My epithalamus is that pineal gland right there. That's the pineal gland, epithalamus. And, it, the, epi, and the pineal gland is right above my superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. I have my corporate quadrigemina. So pineal, interthalamic adhesion, thalamus, hypothalamus, mammillary body. I'll come back to it. So you can see my thalamus right here. You can see my thalamus right here. Here's the interthalamic adhesion. Here's the thalamus. You can see my thalamus right there. All right. You can see the interthalamic adhesion here, and you can see it here, and you can see it here. You can see it here, you can see it here, and you can see it here, interthalamic adhesion. Next, epithalamus. We did it, but I'll do it again. Here's my epithalamus right there. Here's my habenula, that little, not this pink thing, that's a choroid plexus, but this peach thing or salmon colored thing, that's on my habenula. Pineal, habenula. You might ask, what's that little dot? It must be something that has a number on it. That's the posterior commissure. That's what that is, posterior commissure. Look here, this is my pineal gland. And this time, the pink thing is my habenula. Why do I say that? Because this is my choroid plexus. The blue stuff's my choroid plexus. It looks like blood. So pineal, habenula, corpora quadrigemina, interthalamic adhesion. Pineal, habenula, interthalamic adhesion. Posterior commissure, corpora quadrigemina. So I get to this area, and it's a lot of little things all packed. This is my hypothalamus right here you can see my hypothalamus right here hanging off my hypothalamus is this pituitary gland better than that model is this model let me take this apart here is my interthalamic adhesion here's my thalamus here's my hypothalamus here's my infundibulum with the pituitary the pituitary hangs off my hypothalamus via this infundibulum I also have these two bodies right underneath my, th my hypothalamus, right here and right here. That bump, these go together like this. All right, take them apart. That bump and that bump are called mammillary bodies. They're called mammillary bodies because really on the, f on the anterior side of my midbrain, they look like breasts. I just took the pituitary off. By the way, I didn't name them, and I'm not actually the one thinking they look like breasts. But here's the brain all together. What are those two bumps might look like breasts to somebody? All right? That's why they're called mammillary bodies. Mm -hmm. And then you take this apart, and you can see that it's the mammillary body right underneath the hypothalamus, and it's the mammillary body right underneath the hypothalamus. And now I put my pituitary back on. Okay, where are we? We are 
right there. Infundi we did all that. Okay, now we have the cerebrum. What we have here is the cerebrum is divided into lobes. So I have my cerebral cortex, which is the gray matter, this pink stuff is the cerebral cortex. I have the white matter, which here is, becomes my internal capsule. It's white matter, it's myelinated. And by the way, that white matter is called cerebral medulla. That's what your list calls it, the cerebral medulla. So cerebral cortex and cerebral medulla. Cortex and medulla. Cortex and medulla. Okay. Then I have these lobes. I have the two frontal lobes, the two parietal lobes, the two occipital lobes, and the two temporal lobes. Temporal, temporal, frontal, frontal, parietal, parietal, occipital, occipital. Now, let's talk about what differentiates them. This, the bumps are called gyri, the valleys are called sulci. Unless it's a really deep valley, then it's called a fissure. So I got a gyrus, and I got a gyrus, and I got a sulcus in between. This sulcus right here is called the central sulcus. The, the lobes in front of my central sulcus are the frontal lobes. The lobes immediately behind my central sulcus are called the parietal lobes. There is no hard delineation between parietal and occipital, but my occipital lobes are the very back lobes of my brain. Like if you told me to draw the line between parietal and occipital right here, I would not be able to do it. But I do know that this is parietal and that's parietal, and this is occipital and that's occipital, and there's a line in there someplace. And then I have my temporal lobe right here. My temporal lobe is separated from my frontal and my parietal via this lateral fissure, lateral cerebral fissure. On this side, you can see that my temporal lobe is separated from my frontal and my parietal by this lateral cerebral fissure. The fissure that, that, that cuts my brain in the right and left hemispheres, that fissure right there, is called the longitudinal fissure. You probably wished it was called the sagittal fissure, but it's not. It's called the longitudinal fissure. And then there's a fissure that separates my cerebellum from my cerebrum. And that fissure right there is called my transverse fissure. Transverse fissure. Cerebellum, cerebrum. Transverse fissure. Cerebellum, cerebrum. Lateral fissure, longitudinal fissure. I missed one lobe. I'm sorry I missed a lobe. I got to do this for you. Let me put this back together. Right there. Right there. Here it is. All right. Here's what we got to do for me to, to get this lobe, to get this um, lobe that I missed. Put the brain back together for you. All right. If I were, this, the, this brain's all back together. Let me get this back together. There, that brain's all back together. If I were to stick my finger or my stick in my lateral cerebral fissure, here's the temporal lobe, here's the parietal lobe, here's the frontal lobe, here's the occipital lobe. What my stick is touching is called the insula. That's what my stick is touching. Well, let's look at what my stick is touching. I pull this off and I look in here and this is what my stick was touching. <laughs> well, what the he how the heck does this model represent that? It represents it by making it look like a lobe. That's the insula. That's the insula. All right? That's where your taste buds go. Your taste bud, I mean, that's not where your taste buds go. The taste buds receive the sweet, sour, salt, bitter, whatever, send the signal back here. That's where you taste. That's gustation. All right, now where are we? Now we're done with the front side. The back side.